Good day, everyone. This is Steve Schuff on behalf of Bella Demore Group of Keller Williams Realty. Wanted to come to you, spend five minutes with you to give you the recap of quarter two, uh, the time frame between April, May, and June. What's been happening in the real estate market? Uh, if we can get a hold on that, then we might be able to determine where it is that we're going. So let's jump right in. This red line is a graph that represents the, the number of new listings that came on in a given month. This represents here the last 12 months. We're focusing in here on this last three. So this is April, May, and June. So if you can see, uh, we've had an increase of new listings coming on the market. This is what we expected. We just didn't know to what degree we were going to see an increase of listings coming on the market. And so comparatively speaking, this past June was um, 20, 2416 versus the previous June was 2460. Close, a little bit under where we were in June. But question is really is like, how quickly are we going to ramp up here? What does July end up? What I can tell you right now in looking at the current data is that on a weekly basis, we're seeing more listings come on, 1,500, 1,600 uh, available per week, uh, which tells me that we could see a spike going from June to July. That is to be determined, but this is how the new listings have come on. Now, let's bring in the under contracts. How many of these properties actually went under contract in the same period of time? So as you can see, the blue line here is the number of properties that went under contract. It mimics the new listings. However, two things to note. Number one, this gap is the difference between how many properties are coming on the market versus how many of them are actually selling. So this is a significant gap. Uh, I'll tell you what that means here in a second. But the other thing that I want you to focus on is the distance between May and June, the increase there versus the increase in May and June for under contracts. It's not as steep. So if you kind of look at this buyer line and draw a line across, this is probably the amount of buyers we're going to see. So with that being said, if we're going to see a continued increase of listings coming on, and if our buyers stay flat, the number of under contracts stay flat, two things are going to happen. Number one, buyers are going to have more options. They have more options now than they did, you know, look at December. I mean, December was a different story altogether, but they have more options to choose from. That's good. Um, sellers, there is no, there is no uh, drought of buyers out there for you. Um, even though there's this difference, there's not enough inventory out there to, to negatively impact what it is that you're trying to do in selling your home. Uh, so buyers have more options. Uh, the interest rates have not impacted home sales uh, the way that maybe the media sounds like it will. Uh, there is no trouble coming up around the corner. There is no crash coming. Uh, the bottom is not going to fall out. The property you buy today will hold its value and it will continue to appreciate. Uh, if that changes, I will let you know. But right now, that is the story. Um, also, with the increased amount of inventory, that does not mean as a seller that you're going to take less for your home. It means you're going to get what you want. So that's kind of the way the numbers come together. You're going to be able to accomplish your goal as long as you're priced accordingly uh, to the market. Talking about price, let's look at the price distribution. Here is $25,000 increments of price points. And here is, um, and this is over the last quarter versus previous quarter, the number of units in each of those price points. The red line is new listings. The blue line is under contracts. What is significant about this is that in every price point for the last quarter, with the exception of something around here in the 1 million area, there are less buyers than there are listings available. So more listings than there are buyers for each price point. Again, this is significant because in the previous quarter and into the previous year, it was flipped. There were more buyers than there were more listings. So the red, the blue line was above the red line. So this is, this is good to know. We're kind of um, in a market where there's choice and at the same time, sellers can accomplish their goal. As we look at uh, a few other things here, days on market. If you're a seller in this market, what you can expect over the last quarter, what we've seen is that the average days on market is 18 compared to the previous quarter that was 29. So even though it seems like everything's moving so fast, you need to plan on two to three weeks of being on the market before you get that deal that you're, that you're um, really hoping to get. Uh, but keep in mind, this is an average. So you've got some properties out there that sell in 24 hours, and then you've got some that take five weeks to sell. So that brings us to the 18. But remember what I said about price point and sellers being able to get their price? Buyers, this is important for you too, because you need to know how to be able to make an offer um, and can you negotiate? So watch this. So over the last quarter, sellers on average are getting 100.7%. 
which means some of them are selling overpriced, some of them are selling under. That tells me there is negotiation, but it also tells me that sellers are getting what they want. Comparatively speaking to the first quarter, look at this, 97.55%. The first quarter, there was negotiation all over the place, but that's probably not what we were hearing as, as the general public. It's like you have to offer at or over list price in order to get something done. That's just simply not the case. So it's important to know where we've been to know where we're going so that you can know, you know, if you're a seller, you you want to be able to get what you want. What's the best way to do that? And then also as a buyer, what options are available to me and what kind of room do I have to negotiate? Finally, I'm going to show you the month supply of inventory. And while this screen is up, you can kind of look at what else is out there. Uh, and if you have questions about what you see, please let me know. Month supply of inventory right here is the amount of time it would take to sell all the properties that are on the market if no more came on today. So take everything how long does it take to sell? So over the last quarter, what that number has been is 1.2 months of inventory. So 1.2 months to sell through everything. Prior to that, uh, previous quarter, it was one month of inventory. These Both of these numbers are up. Obviously, the 1.2 is up for the, the second quarter or the first quarter. But both these numbers are up. On a monthly basis, we have seen 0 0.7, 0 0.6. So over time, over the last year, these numbers have been going up. So as a frame of reference, an equal balance market um, that we haven't seen in a handful of years is roughly around, let's say, five to six months of inventory. So we are going to still be in a seller's market um, for a good bit of time. Uh, and the trends and, and statistics that we're seeing also tell us that we're going to be in this type of market that we're in for the next 12 to 18 months, which means no crash, no bottom falling out. Um, and um, people are still able to accomplish their goals. So the point being of all this, it's a very specific market for you. Uh, there is not one blanket market. It's a grab bag. So there are different elements that, you know, depending on what your needs are and what you're looking to do that you need to focus on. Uh, but there's not one word that can sum up everything. It's a very individually based market. So if there is something that you're looking to do, uh, let's talk about that. Schedule a time with our team. You can click on one of the links in the email here um, or um, reach out to us on our website, belladamore.com. We'd be happy to talk to you about that. Um, but let's craft a plan for you um, because I just don't want you relying on the, the, the mainstream out there. Um, it's too complicated uh, and too individualized. So we'd be happy to help in any way possible. Um, as always, thanks for listening. I hope this is helpful. Let me know what questions you have and have a great day.